Now let's take it all the way to the end of the process. All right, I started off my, my demonstration talking about, okay, you've never seen Digital Performer before, here's how you get started. Then we talk about, okay, here's how you develop a song and mix it. Now what we're gonna talk about is, uh, we're gonna talk about mastering. Al Cooper uh, was a, uh, uh, he was Bob Dylan's keyboard player, uh, he, he produced uh, Freebird, he's got the Freebird 24 track tape in his basement. Uh, he's been around for a long time and it's been a wonderful experience working with Al. And uh, one of the things that, that Al did was he worked with a guy named Mike Bloomfield. Mike Bloomfield uh, also played guitar uh, for Bob Dylan, and he played guitar for Janis Joplin and a few other people. He passed away in, I believe, 1981. Bloomfield put out a, a number of uh, solo records. I, there's been a couple of greatest hits compilations, but there's never really been a tribute box set for, uh, um, uh, for Mike Bloomfield. Sony Records contacted Al Cooper and said, OK, let's do a, a box set, and we want you to produce it. My relationship with Al Cooper is that I'm the engineer, he's the producer, and he's really taught me about the difference between the creative head and the technical head. My job was to do the technical work and make this happen. Now, because there'd been all these releases before, all these prior releases of Bloomfield, we wanted to make this box set as special as possible and, and try to get as much unreleased material as we could. And the job of making this CD box set is to be able to listen to all these drastically different recordings and there not be these jarring differences as you go from song to song. And that really was a challenge. So uh, this is the, uh, the mastering file. Right? And uh, these are the individual tracks, the individual songs. Don't worry about this track yet. I'll explain what that is in a moment. But uh, here, here what we did, we'll go into the sequence editor. I'll hide that mystery track at the top there. And we started laying in the original recordings. You can see that these are two tracks. You can see that some editing was done. Uh, uh, Cooper has a song called 56th Street Bridge. And we have one recorded at Fillmore East and one recorded at Fillmore West. And he actually switches back and forth 3,000 miles in one beat. And uh, so what we're doing here is we're assembling the order of the songs and doing any editing that needs to be done. And uh, let's see now. I'm, I'll show you a, a good example of an edit. If I can find it. OK. OK, I think this is probably a good example here. Let me zoom on down. All right, so one song is ending, as you can see, and the next song is about to start. And we've put a little extra applause in there. We want to get the spacing of the song just right. And if they're live tracks, we'll go grab a piece of applause from another part of the track and drop it in. See, now you know how it's done. I'm taking all the magic away. And the next song is going to start up. And let me see if I can find another example in here. I think we've got him talking at some point. Uh, let's see, introductions. Yeah, I think this could be it. Let's uh, check this out. This is cool because uh, you hear Bill Graham introduce the band. Let's take this back, uh, 1280, right? The musicians on this job are Jerry Dramont's playing bass, and uh, John Cressy is playing drums, and uh, Paul Harris is playing piano, and we're playing, and, uh, and uh, this is the nature of this super session, and so now we're going to play. It's a guest for us to bring on Michael Bloomfield, Al Cooper, and their friends. Kind of takes the magic away when you can see exactly how it's done. But th what we've done now is we've spaced out all the tracks so that we have the layout of the CD that we want. And the next step was to get the songs to sound consistent next to each other. And you see that I've got layers and layers of plugins here. Uh, on this first track, you know, I'll, I'll start working. I'm at the console. Cooper will say, OK, we need to fix this. We need to fix that. I'll be working on the EQ and start to get some filters going on. And Cooper will say, get out of the way. I want to do something. And he's going to put, he, I say, don't mess with my EQ, Al. So he brings up another EQ. And then he brings up another EQ. <laughs> so. We finally get the track EQ'd the way that we like. We've got a master fader. I'm using a mastering limiter here. 
Uh, and normally, uh, when you do a mastering project, at least for Sony Records, they want the individual tracks at 96 kilohertz, 24 bit, and they're going to take those last tracks, they're going to put them into the CD master, and they're going to make the, the CD. And Al, Al Cooper said, no way, Sony's not touching this. He says, we're going to give them a finished product. So he persuaded them to, allow, to, to let us do this, where we gave them a, a 16 bit 44 1 master. And so I'm doing the, the bit quantization and the dithering right in the track here. And uh, so I'm going to turn these, uh, these effects off right, for the first song. So you're going to hear the raw file. This is with no processing done to it. All right, now I'm going to bring in the processing. So now we've got something that's up to the right volume level. It's got consistent tone. And what I can do is, because of the way that I've set my file up, I can go anywhere in the sequence and just listen for tone, for volume. When I'm doing that kind of work, I'm not listening to the music. I'm just making sure that as I go from track to track, I go right to the middle of the song, press play, move to the next one. Am I hearing jarring differences in volume and tone? And once I've done all that work, and once I've got all the processing on the individual tracks, we've got our spacing, we've got our crossfades, we've got, the, got the, the sound, the volume of all the tracks together. This was a real challenge, because you want to make this as loud as other CDs, but not destroy the dynamic range. And these are very dynamic recordings manage to get our levels up, and I take the entire project here, select the whole thing, and bounce to disk. I bounce it down to a two-track file. And that's what this is up here. So we'll go back into our sequence editor, and now you know what this, uh, this uh, track is at the top. This is the sum total of the whole CD, right? So if I play that top track from beginning to end, I'm going to hear my disk. Of course, we need track index points. And that was just as simply a matter of going in and making the cuts where we wanted to. And when you have songs crossfading one into the other, you have to decide at exactly the point that if you start the second song from the beginning, where in the crossfade does the track index point go? And it's very easy to just slide those points around and say, OK, let's, let's play this track. Do we like where it starts? OK, cool. You notice I didn't even name the songs at this point. I just numbered them as they're going to go down onto the disc, exported them out. We used a, a piece of software called Jam, which is actually, I don't even know if they make it anymore, but it, it makes Red Book CDs. We dropped our I, I, IRSC codes in there, and we delivered the finished CD master to Sony Records. One, one other thing i got to tell you about. I'm very proud of this. We mixed two songs on the latest Bob Dylan record, and this came out uh, in September. I now have my name on a Bob Dylan record. Thank you, Al Cooper, for that. And all this work is done in Digital Performer. So whether you're starting out You've never seen the program before, whether you're a new songwriter and you're looking to make a production, whether you're working for, for Sony Records and you're doing mastering of, of archival material, Digital Performer has the chops. Digital Performer has the tools that it takes to do it from the beginning to the end of the process. Very happy to show you a, a, a quick glimpse of Digital Performer, just show you some of the things that you can do with the software. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a wonderful NAMM show. I'm Dave, we're Motu, and thank you very much.